The estimated number of babies born on the 14th of January 1977 was around 334,134. And one of those born on that day was Narain Karthikeyan. He would have an F1 drive in 2005, then again in 2012. So what was the go with this guy's career? How did he get to Formula 1? And why was he shown the door at the end of the 2012 season? In this video, I'll tell you all about it. Let's have a chat about Narain Karthikeyan, India's first ever F1 driver. Narain would show an interest in motorsports from a very early age. He took inspiration from his father, a talented rally driver who won the South India Rally seven times. Narain would set himself a goal, and it was a pretty big goal. He wanted to become India's very first F1 driver. So with that goal in mind, Let's look at his early career. Narain would see some decent results, with a podium in Formula Maruti, an open wheel, single seater category that is made and raced in India. He would later become a semi-finalist in Pilote Elf competition driving a Formula Renault car, but then return to India to continue racing in Formula Maruti. Then, Narain would compete in the Formula Vauxhall Junior Championship in Great Britain, something he enjoyed and gained valuable experience from. In 1994, he would race in the Formula Ford ZTEC series as a number two driver for Foundation Racing Team. He would score a podium that year at Istoril in a support race for the Portuguese Grand Prix. Narain would compete in the British Formula Ford Winter Series, win the championship, and become the first Indian driver to win any championship in Europe. That's quite an awesome achievement if you ask me. In 1996, he would get a full season in the Formula Asia International Series. He would win the championship, becoming the first Indian and the first Asian to win that series. Again, that's another awesome achievement. Narain would return to Britain once again, racing in the Formula Opel Championship. He would finish 6th in the standings, with a pole position and a win at Donington Park being the highlight of his season. So now we are in 1998 and it's the British Formula 3 Championship. Narain would be driving for Carlin Motorsport. He managed two third place finishes at Spa and Silverstone. He finished 12th overall and would continue for the 1999 season. He managed five podiums and would get two wins at Brands Hatch. He'd score two pole positions, three fastest laps and two lap records. He was also the first driver to score a win for Carlin in British F3. The records for this bloke just they just don't stop. In 2000, Narain would take pole at Macau and seal the fastest lap. He'd win both international F3 races at Spa and the Korea Super Prix. Then in 2001, Narain would finish in the top 10 for the year in the Formula Nippon F3000 Championship. Then a big moment for Narain, and a massive step towards his ultimate goal. He became the first Indian ever to drive a Formula 1 car. He would drive it in a test for Jaguar at Silverstone. He was then offered another test later in September, and again at Mugello in October. He was only half a second off Jean Alesi. Narain would continue his career in the Telefonica World Series, taking pole position and securing the fastest lap ever at Interlagos aside from a Formula 1 car. You know, the more you look into these drivers, you start to see how quick some of them actually are. Narain's next Formula 1 drive would be with Minardi, and he nearly drove for the team in 2004, but unfortunately, he couldn't get the cash to secure his seat. Then in 2005, Narain Karthikeyan had signed a deal with Jordan F1 team for the 2005 season, finally hitting his big goal. He would become India's very first Formula 1 driver. In his first race in Australia, Narain would start 12th, but he dropped to 18th by the end of the first lap. He'd finish the race 15th, two laps behind Giancarlo Fisichella. Narain would score his first points at the 2005 United States Grand Prix, one of the most controversial races of all time, and we kind of know what happened there. He'd finish fourth behind his teammate Tiago Montero. Could you imagine if he scored a podium in his first year? Gee whiz. Narain's best finish for the season was 11th in Japan. He'd finish the year 18th, but with just 5 points. After the 2005 season, Jordan F1 team was taken over by Midland. Now, allegedly, the team wanted $11.7 million in order to secure his seat. This didn't happen, so Narain was left without a drive. In 2005, Narain would test for Williams, and he would outpace Nico Rosberg. Yeah, Nico Rosberg, world champion. <laughs> 
This was a pretty good look for Narain, and he would become Williams' fourth driver for the 2006 and 2007 season. In 2007, he was linked with a move to Spiker, but this would fall apart after withdrawal from sponsors. Later on, he was linked with the drive for Force India after their takeover of Spiker, but this never really eventuated into anything. He was also linked with Super Aguri, but instead ended up driving for Team India in the A1 GP. Now, fast forwarding to 2011, Narain Karthikeyan would get another chance in Formula 1, with one of the most infamous teams to ever compete, HRT. Narain would break records this season, but not exactly the records you want to be breaking. See, it wasn't exactly his fault. The HRT was just not a very good car. He broke the record twice for the lowest place finish. Yes, twice. First in China, finishing 23rd after an Alguswari retirement, but then at the European Grand Prix, not a single car retired, meaning that he finished 24th, breaking his previous record. Narain would later be replaced by Daniel Ricciardo on the 30th of June for the remaining races of the season, bar the Indian Grand Prix. He would compete in a few practice sessions here and there though. Now we are in 2012, Narain's final season in Formula 1. He would stay with HRT, and this season would be, well, just, just really? Again, I don't blame this guy. The car was just awful. Narain's best finish would be 13th in Monaco. He wouldn't score a single point. I mean, he was also called a cucumber by Vettel and an idiot. But Narain hit back to his credit. He called Vettel a crybaby, which, you know, fair play, I guess. But that beef was settled pretty quickly and nothing really, you know, it kind of just went away. HRT struggled financially, big time. They attempted to sell the team, but they couldn't find a buyer. They were left out of the FIA's 2013 entry list. Narain didn't have a drive anymore. He would end his Formula 1 journey with 46 starts and just 5 points. Narain Karthikeyan, in my opinion, was an important driver for Formula 1. He gave a nation something to be excited about. The first ever Indian F1 driver. That in itself is an awesome achievement. Especially when India has such a big Formula 1 following, I feel like we never saw Narain's true potential. And it's a bit of a shame, especially in his earlier career, you get a glimpse of some of the speed that this guy had. He had some decent pace, but was never really given a good car. I always had a bit of a soft spot for this guy. I always wanted him to do well. I'm not really sure why especially in 2011 and 2012. Narain went on to do some more interesting things post-career, and yes, set more records. <laughs> this was a short, brief story on India's very first F1 driver, Narain Karthikeyan. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you liked it. I don't really cover drivers too much, so it's something I might do in the future. I kind of enjoyed this one. You really learn more about drivers' backgrounds and, and how good they are in junior careers and stuff like that. So this was definitely interesting and quite an enjoyable video to make. I know I have a lot of Indian viewers, so I hope you enjoyed this video, a bit of a throwback to the past. And uh, as always, thank you for watching.